Okay, so I'm going to dem demonstrate how to upload gems at this point. Uh, you'll need to establish a rubygems.org account, um, and then you'll be able to package your your gems, your uh, Ruby projects all together into a gem, and then upload uh, your gem to rubygems.org and share it with the world. So I'm going to uh, brief you on how to do that with Visual Ruby. Um, there's a lot of methods in Visual Ruby that will uh, be very helpful. Um, you can do all, just about everything with just one click. So I'm going to select my folder here. I'm going to select vrlib. That is uh, <coughs> the library that uh, allows you to uh, do all the graphics files in Visual Ruby. I'll uh, do a close all just to make it look better. Um, so here's what we're going to be working with. Uh, here, if you click on this tab, it'll show your local gems, okay? So you can see I have Gem Cutter, I have Cairo, <coughs> I have Pango, Require All. All these gems are on my computer right now, meaning I have installed those gems. And typically the way you install a gem is you type uh, sudo gem install vrlib, for example, and that will install a vrlib gem. You can see I have four of them installed. I actually don't need four of them installed, so I guess the first thing I'll show you is how to remove a gem, which is you just right-click on it, and it gives you this menu to choose from. And one of the choices is uninstall gem. So it's going to ask for my system password. I'm not going to show it to you guys. And I'm going to click OK. And then down in this window, you'll see that it says um, successfully uninstalled vrlib11. OK, so I don't need 10. Let's uninstall that. Once you give it your password, it doesn't ask you again, so we might as well uninstall 13 as well. And uh, and I had I installed these two, which I want to get rid of. So let's get rid of those two as well. Um, okay, and now I have three versions of Visual Ruby on my computer, so I can uninstall those. Um, so now I have the most recent version. Um, now uh, here this. Tab Remote Gems will show you the gems that you that you own on on uh, on RubyGems.org. See, I'm the author of Visual Ruby, so um, this this gem I can I can push I can push this gem or pull it because I own it. Um, and uh, here I'll show you the Ruby Gem project page. I just right-clicked on that, and that brings up my Ruby Gems page. Um, you may be familiar with this website of theirs that displays all the various gems that are available to the public. So, um, so that's one of your options, is you can right-click and look at the Ruby Gems project page, or you can open the home page. Um, in my case, that would be uh, visualruby.net um, up here. So that's that's what I have listed in my gem spec file as as the uh, home home page of this gem. So you can but you can look at the home page of any gem, and then you can also yank it. I'm not going to yank this because because it's the only. Uh, I'm not sure if it's it's my latest version of R R Visual Ruby up there, so I'm not going to yank it. But you can yank the gem as well. Okay which will take it down from there. It won't actually take it down, but it will make it where people can't download it, I believe. Um, so likewise with local gems, um, there are, like, uh, let's take this JSON gem, for example. Um, you can, uh, I don't want to uninstall it, because you can actually break things by uninstalling it. There may be programs that depend on this gem, so I don't want to uninstall it. Um, but let's see what their home page is. So we'll click Open Home Page, and it takes us to this uh, JSON implementation for Ruby. And this is a good way to to see what what it is you have installed on your computer. See, or if you're wondering what JSON is, um, you can 
just simply right click on it and go to their home page. Um, so that will work for any of these gems. So you have the option of uninstall, open home page, and um, view specification. Um, we'll take a quick look at Visual Ruby's specification. This is just a uh, representation of um, of the uh, <coughs> of the of the uh, gem spec, and it's uh, it's going to be in a little bit different format, but it's almost readable. Um, so you can see this is this is basically the output that you get um, if you query Ruby gems for the gem spec, um, and you'll see on here like when I right clicked on uh, go to home page, one of the uh, variables in here is uh, home page, and I don't see here it is. See so so it basically digs out this this home page setting. And takes and opens the browser and lets you see that. So that's what's going on there. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so now we'll try uh, uh, uploading a gem here. Okay. So the first thing you can do is create a gem spec file. Now um, I don't want to do that because I already have a gem spec file created. I've already used this. And I've edited it and made it the way I like it. But if you say create gem spec file, it will it will load up a window like this. It'll quickly jump to a loading a window like this. And then you fill out things like your name and um, any dependencies you have. A require all is one of the dependencies of Visual Ruby because we use that to require everything um, into the program. Um, this should largely be filled out for you. But I put in my email address. Um, a short description of what it is. Um, here's the home page. This is where it'll take you if you do the home page option that I just showed you. Um, and it, it asks for executable files. This VRLib is a library, so it doesn't have any executable files. But if you wanted it, uh, but um, for example, Visual Ruby, would, this would say uh, VR because that's what you type in to run Visual Ruby. Okay. So, but this doesn't have that. And then the files, which will be filled in already with a glob, and then the Visual Ruby project, don't worry about that. That just suppresses a warning. Okay, so that's all you need to know there. Um, so in order to create a gem, what we'll do is first, first let me delete these gems out. Okay, so I'm just pressing the delete key to delete each one of these. Okay. And uh, one thing you need to do to here, too, is, is change the version number. So I'm changing this version to be 15. It was 14. So now I'm going to create the next version, which is 15. So I'm going to right-click on this and select Build Gem. Now all of a sudden, this gem here pops up in the screen. Okay. Now if you right-click on that gem, you have the option of installing the gem, which, um, which I guess I can show you that. Local gems here, look, VRLib is 14 right there. So what we're going to do is we'll install VRLib 15, and you'll see that the output here says successfully installed, one, one gem installed, and this RDoc crap. Okay? So if you look over in local gems now, you'll see that there's VRLib has been added. Okay? Because that was that gem that we just installed on our computer. Now if you want to send this gem to rubygems.org, you simply push gems to rubygem.org. Okay. So now in this box it now says OK. So it was successful. It pushed that gem. If I tried to push this again, it would say conflict because I already have a version 15 on the server. So I can't push another version 15. I have to go to 16. So, um, so essentially, we successfully uh, pushed that gem to the server. And now you'll see if we go to VRLib and we go open RubyGems home page, you'll see now that on the RubyGems page, VRLib has been updated to version 15. It was 14 a second ago, but now it's 15. And you'll see we just updated it. March 2nd, 2012, just got updated. <clears throat> okay, so now that, that version is available to the public. 
So, uh, so now on remote gems, this is simply querying that website and it says VRLib15. So everything's been updated. Now, if I had not installed it on my own machine, I could have just pushed it and then I would have 14 on my machine and 15 on rubygems.org. Now, uh, let's see here. There's nothing I really want to do with this. I, you can always yank these gems um, from Ruby gems, or you, you can always do it manually um, with, uh, with the command line as well, if you want to yank different versions. Um, so I guess that that covers it in terms of uh, in terms of uh, uh, how to how to upload and download gems. So uh, I'll leave you with that, and we'll uh, see you next time. Oh, and to for more information on all this, um, the best place to go is visualruby.net. So okay, so there it is typed out for you. So go there. That has tutorials and things you can uh, learn from. Okay, and also the example files are pretty much always the best way to go. Um, if you go to Open Project, um, you can uh, you'll see all these examples. Have a look at those. Okay, all right. Until next time.